Hi everyone, thank you for being here and welcome to this first webinar, 10 ways to instantly improve your videos. Please let me know, do you guys, can you guys listen to me okay? Can you hear the audio? Let me know, give me a thumbs up, all right? So just um, in the meantime, we can wait for a little bit, perfect, perfect. We can wait for a few more people to log in and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Stephanie Martinez. I'm a reporter. I've been a reporter for probably seven to eight years. Um, I'm currently working at Univision as a journalist. My career has always been as a MMJ, that's a multimedia journalist. And basically what that means is that I'm a one woman's fan. What, what does that mean? That means that I have to do everything by myself. So I've learned a few things throughout the years. I've learned how to be more efficient, um, be more efficient with my equipment, carry less things and just work a little bit faster. So this webinar, I'm super excited. I did it before and it got really, really good feedback. So I decided to do it again as part of a webinar series. Um, one of the things, usually I do it with somebody else that collects the questions for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a video at the end of the webinar. And during the video, you can send me your questions and then we'll take a few minutes to get into that, all right? So why don't we start with tip number one? I told you about me, tip number one, the exposure triangle. So first of all, what is exposure? Exposure is the amount of light that it's in your film or your picture. So one of the most basic things or concepts about filming it's the exposure triangle. There's three elements to determine your exposure and they all have to do with light, okay? That's aperture, shutter, and ISO. The aperture is basically the size of the opening of the lens when a picture is taken. Obviously, the wider the opening, light is gonna come. You can think of it a little bit as the iris of your eye, okay? So if there's more light, it just closes to minimize the light that goes in there. So you can think, um, about the aperture just as an iris. The shutter speed, that's the amount of time that the shutter is open. The bigger the number, the brighter the shot. Finally, ISO. ISO is basically how sensitive is the sensor to light. If you increase the ISO, you're gonna get more light into your shot. Now there's a tricky part to this and a big issue. The higher the ISO, the more grainy your film or your picture will be, okay? So if you have to get a perfect exposure for, for your shot, basically you're gonna go first either to aperture or the shutter speed, and then the last resource is gonna be your ISO because if you put that up, if it's like a very low light situation and you put those things up, it's gonna look super grainy and it's really not gonna look good at all. All right, tip number two. It also has to do with the, ex um, the exposure triangle. Now, the importance of these three settings is that they all help you achieve a certain look. Okay, so the aperture, the bigger the aperture, the more shallow your depth of field. And that's basically the distance that is in focus. So those beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pictures that you see, like the one that's in there, you have a blurry background, and it's just a super gorgeous, that's gonna be achieved with the aperture. The shutter, that's the second one that I was talking about, the bigger the number, the blurrier the movement. So what's happening here is that, have you seen those pictures where there's water and it looks amazing and it's very silky and smooth? Well, that's, that's acquired with the shutter. Okay, and also when you see the pictures that are, the water is very crispy, that's also the shutter. Finally, the ISO, it's great for night photography, but at quality's expense, as I said. So if you're gonna use the ISO, you have to know how to use it well, and you have to have very, um, the lighting needs to be perfect so that your picture actually comes out really, really great. And here, in my next um, slide right here, there's a cheat sheet that you can find 
anywhere and this is the best resource that you can have because you're obviously not going to memorize all of these things I do not know them. So I carry this around. I have a screenshot on my phone. And if I want to modify anything, the aperture, because I want to achieve a blurry background, then I go into this cheat sheet and I look F 1.4. Okay. So that's a large aperture. And it, as you can see right there in the little picture, it's very blurry in the back. So you can use these for all of the three settings in your camera. Now, one of the things that usually the SLR cameras have is that the priority mode. So if you want to give priority to your aperture because you want to acquire a certain look, you put priority mode, aperture, and then the other settings, the shutter and the ISO, will automatically set for you. So that's actually a really good, th really good thing to know. Tip number three. For some reason, I don't know why, this technique just works. It works for everything, it works for film, and it's basically designed to help build drama and make the shot more interesting, okay? So imagine that your viewfinder, that little screen on your camera, is divided into nine segments by two vertical and two horizontal lines. The rule of third, it says that you should position the important element on your scene over these lines so right just look at the picture and you're gonna understand that a little bit so it needs to be either to the left or to the right the center one is usually not that interesting but a lot of people use the center like cnn uses um interviews right centered and it works for them so it's fine but if you have to take a picture of anything that you know it's out there in nature that might not be too impactful putting it in the center, this is what you have to do. Put it along those lines, okay? The impact is huge. Let's see, tip number four, camera angles. Camera angles, uh, camera angles are very, very important because they help you communicate a certain emotion, okay? You can play around with the camera angles and make yourself look big like a king, queen, or, you can make yourself look like an aunt, not aunt, aunt, okay? Aunts, whatever, you know what I mean. But you can look very small and insignificant. So camera angles are very important. And you can, if you start paying attention to the videos around, you'll see how that impacts, and it's a lot. So when you have the low camera angle, basically you have the camera right you know, under your eyes, looking up towards you. And that's going to make you look strong, dominant, aggressive. The second one, the eye level, this is the one that I really, really like and I use the most because it's very personal and it gives a personal angle to your viewers. They connect, you know, more um, in a more truthful way with you. Finally, the high angle, this one makes the person look very sub submissive, submissive, pardon my language, ESL. But it makes a person look very weak, small, scared. So maybe you can see like Game of Thrones, for example, when you see the dragon and you see Khaleesi, you know, the blonde one, the beautiful blonde one, just looking very small. That That's all camera angles, obviously. So the one that I use for my for my videos, which is the new squeakies, I use an eye level angle, but I lower it just a little bit. So it's like right below eye level. And the reason I do that is because I like it when I look just a little bit, you know, with a little bit more authority. So when I do my stories um, for Univision, a lot of people that see my stories on TV, whatever, and then they see me personally, they're like, okay, you're you're small, I'm 5'2", okay? So I need anything that I can to seem taller. And this is what I do. I also tell every photographer, can you please put the angle from the bottom up? I don't care about this part, double chain, I just wanna look taller than what I am. So that's the trick. Okay, so the three-point lighting. Three-point lighting is also extremely important. It's a very, very simple method, but very effective when it comes to lighting your space. Basically, um, it's composed of three lights, the key light, the fill light, and the backlight. 
The key, the key light is the main light and usually the strongest of all three, okay? You place it on one side of the camera or the subject so that the side is super, super lit. It's kind of strong, but not going, not overexposing your shot, but it's a stronger one. Then you have the fill light and the fill light is the secondary light used to kind of fill in those shadows, the harsh shadows that are gonna come out because of the key light. Finally, you have the backlight and that one's placed behind you and it's great for definition, for your hair, for your shoulders, and it's gonna separate yourself from the background. So that one's actually very, very important when you're doing depth of field, when you're doing the blurry background or if, there's, if, if it's all a black shirt and a black background and you need to separate the backgrounds, then you, put, you have to put a light on the shoulders and on the head. Let's see, tip number six. So one of the things that happens a lot when people are nervous is that they blink fast. They blink super, super fast and they don't notice. They don't know that they're doing it. So one of the tricks to look more confident on camera is blink slower. It is gonna feel very, very weird. And I always say this, it's gonna feel like you're falling asleep or you think, the person's going to think, the viewers are going to think that I'm, you know, I'm falling asleep, asleep here. But no, it's actually going to look normal because you're already nervous and blinking really fast. So when you slow down, it's going to be very, very normal. So this is like a great, great tip that I give to everyone. And if you think about it, if I'm like this, that's, you know, it looks kind of weird and it makes you look nervous. But also, I mean, don't forget to blink because if you're like this, and don't blink, it's also also like absolutely weird and unsettling. So you wanna make sure that you blink slowly, but frequently, all right? Tip number seven. This is actually something that I learned when I took classes, documentary filmmaking at Duke University. And it's, I love it because I use it all the time, not only for, um, for filming when I'm, when I have the camera on my hand and I don't have a tripod, I use this kind of breathing, but also because it relaxes you a lot. So that's great. So belly breathing, um, let me see, belly breathing. You're basically saturating your lungs with oxygen and then expanding your diaphragm and pushing the belly outward. So if you're engaging your diaphragm, your upper chest should remain rel relatively still. So if you put your hand here on your chest, and you breathe normally, it's gonna be like, my chest is gonna go up and down, up and down. But when you do the belly breathing, you see there, it doesn't move at all. And I'm breathing, believe me. The only thing you have to do is really like pull your stomach outward and that's gonna instinctly just pull some air inside. So. This is the best way if you're recording with handheld recording, um, you don't have a tripod, something that you're running around, or it's actually something that you have to walk very slowly, do belly breathing, and that way you don't move your camera up and down. All right, it's very, very stable. Okay, number, number eight. So if you've seen my videos online, I do a lot of graphics. I put a lot of graphics to my videos because I like communicating as much as I can, a lot of information. Um, and I do that through graphics and text. Sometimes when my, um, my accent just, if I say something weird, I make fun of it and I put a text, I put a hashtag, whatever, okay? But the way that I do this, is it's, there's several ways. I use Photoshop to create my graphic and then I import that into Premiere. But there's also a lot of royalty-free graphics out there. When I want to create my own graphics or text, I actually use those two um, apps, Wordswag and Canva. And there's a trick, you can export them without the background. And once you do that, they save as a PNG. When it's a PNG, you can throw that into your video, over your video, and it's just gonna be a text and it's gonna look great. So if I wanna put some funky words or like a really cool text and font, that's, where, that's what I do. I do it basically, word swag, export, no background, and then import that 
into my project. Okay, so guys, seriously, I have the brain of an elephant. Pollito, how we say in Colombia, it's absolutely terrible. So I forget a lot of things. I need to write everything. I, Spanish doesn't help. It's, it's a struggle, okay? It's a struggle. So if you need help remembering your words, there are several things that you can do. And I use a lot of them, okay? So one of the things is use a poster with bullet points. You can literally write it, put it on the side, put it under, if you, if you put it on the side, it's actually not that weird when you speak it and then you look to the side and then look back. That's okay, it doesn't look weird on camera. You can also place a paper right below um, your camera. You can stick it with tape, somebody hold it for you, and it should be perfectly fine. And you can read anything. You might notice something, but if you're far enough, it's not gonna create any difference. And finally, and my favorite, is the teleprompter app. I use apps with my phone to, um, to help me if I have to say something that's really long. I just use the app. There are several apps, my favorites, Teleprompter, and the other one is called Prompt Smart. What you do is you put your script in there, and you can actually, with your phone, you can record as if you were recording a selfie, like a selfie video, and then you will see your script right there come up and move along, and you can read it. So the, the tricky part about this is that you really need to practice how to read because you don't want to do that. You want to kind of look at the center a little bit and you can move around, but not make it that obvious, but get, get the whole picture of the sentence and read it. So that takes practice. At first, I could not do that thing. But then, you know, that's what I do now for my videos, news quickies. I, it, it's all teleprompter and it's just, you just have to, Practice it and make sure that you get comfortable and at certain parts break away and then come back. That just seems makes you look a lot more confident and as if you're not reading. So you guys have to do that. It's great. I can send you the links of those apps later on if you want. Okay, finally, this is extremely important. You have to record yourself. I cannot emphasize this more. You have to record yourself and look at your ticks, look at your eyes, at your hands. And I always tell this story. When I was at University of Maryland doing my master's in broadcast, we had to anchor, we all had to anchor, I had never anchored. And I did it, I thought I did it well, whatever. I looked at the video and I, my pinky finger, my pinky finger was just tapping away, like it had a heart of its own, a life of its own, and I would just, just do tap, 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 constantly, constantly, okay? It was so ridiculous. So I looked at the video and I'm like, what the hell is that? I stopped doing it, now I'm conscious about it, and I, I make sure that my hands are just, my, <laughs> my pinky is not freely, it's not wandering around, but these are things that you only see if you record yourself. Okay, you're gonna look at your mouth, you're gonna look at your eyes, how you move around, your hands, and there's no other way to improve than to practicing and looking at yourself. And once you record again, you'll see the biggest difference ever. So I cannot emphasize that more. Finally, I have um, in my course, I have a video where I do the, my whole setup, okay? It's my whole setup that I have here in my house. It's not a house, I have a studio within a studio. It's a very small place, but it does not seem like it's small. People are always shocked when I show pictures of my setup and then they see the actual video. It just looks very bright and spacious, it is not. So let me show you, this is just like four or five minutes. I'll show you this so you can have an idea. Hello, welcome to my home. 
this is where I set up my studio. I put it down because I wanted to show you exactly how I set it up. Now I'm recording my audio here because I also want to show you exactly how I sync the audio to the video. First of all, remember how I told you guys about the three point lighting technique? So I'm going to have one light here, one here, and the third one is supposed to go in the back to shine on your shoulders and your head. Um, and that's going to create uh, a division between you and the wall. I don't use that one. I just use my two lights and I just put them at the same level. It's not one feeling and the other one's the key light. I just put them at the same amount of light. So I have my two soft boxes. They are the same brand, which I like. I actually love it, Limo Studio. And I think they're really good quality and it's not too expensive. So I have this too and they come with their own stands stands here's one so what you do with the stands this sometimes are really kind of weird to open but you just have to unscrew it here pull back the legs and then pull this up and then you tighten it again right here just a little screw so you stamp that one right here on one side and this other one I already open it this one's on the other side. Place your lights over it. There's gonna be kind of this hole right here. So you're gonna put it in there. Put it in the hole. Anyways. You tie it right here in the back. There's another screw. You do the same thing here. This is gonna go on this side. Three point lighting. It there tighten it so what we're gonna do now we have the ring light in the notes I have a list of all of the equipment that I bought so you can use that one as well all right this one's a little bit different see the legs are up here so you just you always have to just pull them out tighten there this is gonna go in the center right in front of the chair this is going to have to be a little bit taller. Ring light has, usually it has the same hookup technique right here. So you do the same thing. It's actually really high. I don't know if you can see me right here. I'm going to sit here, have one light here, one light here, and then my ring light right in the center. I got my microphones, and hi, sir, microphones. Okay, I love them. They're kind of expensive. They're around $600, but they're really good and they're wireless. When you are working alone, this is very important to have an extra stand. And the reason why I have this is because I need to focus, right? So what I do is this is my, this is Steph. Pretend Steph. And then I have my camera and I focus and then I take it out and I sit and I'm perfectly focus now because my camera doesn't have a flip viewfinder I can't see anything that I'm recording so what I do is I have an external you know like a screen a little TV a little flat screen and I just connect it to the camera and that way I'm actually seeing exactly what's happening right here and I'll show you later on but I have this this box that I found and I just put it here and I put the flat screen here connected to the camera that goes right here and then I can see it you know everything that's happening and how if I need to fix my hair whatever oh one of the things that I do that's really awesome I have connected all of these lights to Google Home so what I do and I'm gonna show you when I have to turn the lights on I don't have to go one by one I only say Hey Google, turn lights on. And I'm super overexposed. And I'll show you how to fix the um the settings of the camera. Hey Google, turn lights on. All right, guys. Let me set up the camera again. So as you can see, it's a very, very basic 
setup, but it works perfectly. The footage looks amazing. And just so you know, I'm gonna send you guys the equipment, a list of my equipment so you can have that. It has every little thing from audio to lighting to camera, tripods. I have like, I do have like a gorilla equipment. It's actually very small. I can fit all of that in a small backpack. So I'll send you that equipment. And I also wanted to invite you guys to check out the course. That's a wrap. It's a one-stop shop for content creators. We talk about more practical education, practical information. I teach you a lot of things that I've learned throughout the years, a lot of resources free video templates, Lightroom pre presets that I actually uploaded there for you guys. And if you do it now, there's gonna be a discount, of course, 15%. And then you can also access all of the webinars that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work in a lot more. This is the first one, as I said, of a mini series. So hopefully you guys enjoy, enjoy this. If you have any questions, as of now, there are no questions. One thing is this applies to video and film. But if you do have any questions, feel free to DM me. I answer every message. I look at all of them. And my Instagram is at StephanMew, okay? Thanks for being here. I appreciate your time. I know it's really hard, but I hope you enjoyed it and you found it very helpful. Bye.